that's okay. No, but you know, Bordeaux sprays got used over and over and over and built up. Yeah. You know, the soils in Annapolis Valley and Nova Scotia are still contaminated from years of Bordeaux sprays oh, really? and arsenic sprays that were used on apples. Oh my goodness. And, it's, and they, they just heavy metal, they just stay in the soil. Yeah. You know. You're talking about the copper to keep the slugs off? Yeah. Is that, does that the work? Copper, or? Right? Well, it works if there's no slugs on the other side of the barrier, which you can't guarantee. <laughs> you know, if you're in a greenhouse, in the bed. Yeah. And, yeah, and you put it on the bench legs and they can't, they won't come up. They won't cross the uh, copper barrier. Okay. But in a field, the chances of them getting over the barrier or already being in there, they'll go, remember, they'll travel through lower levels of the soil. They don't have to just go on the surface. So they do dig. They will, uh, they will ruffle along under the, the loose part of the they, they can They won't go deep, but they will, they, and their eggs can always be there. Mm. So you know, it's raised beds, it works? Yeah, it will work if there wasn't anybody in the bed to begin with. If you can guarantee that. But we can also, in our raised beds, and being vigilant with our plants, we can see them and pick them out, and then they won't get back Yeah, in. you can use slug bait. That slug bait's really safe and effective. Now, the best way to use this slug bait is it's an attractant for slugs. So you do not want to put a little circle over around your plant. <laughs> you know, because it's not a toxin. It won't kill them by poisoning. So they don't die. It takes a while for them to dry up to this state, right? So they have plenty of time to come and eat the bait and then eat your plant and then go away and die. So what you want to do is put the bait, the best way to use this bait is very small amounts over a large area. And um, you prepare a seed bed and then you don't plant it and put the bait out for a few days and then put the seeds in. Or prepare the seed bed, plant it, seed it, and bait on top of that so that slugs that are out for until the seeds germinate get killed. Uh, and this is very effective bait. So if a bird picks this up, it won't hurt it. But it's good to apply this at night, like in the evening, because birds will follow you around and pick it up, and then you don't have slug bait. So it's, you know, if you've got juncos that are following you or something. But this is, um, if you get, if you need certified organic products, there is, uh, here's one that's OMRI certified. This is readily available, and um, these bag sizes are pretty expensive, but you can get, I can't remember if it's Sluggo or this one, EcoSense, mm -hmm. you can get them in big bags. Yeah. And the price is much cheaper. Isn't it the best way, strategy is preventative for slugs? It's like not creating an environment for, because I was having this discussion about, with the Connie about mulches, right? And mulches like wood chips are like homes for slugs. Yeah, but if they're eating wood chips, they're not eating your plants. So. Oh. See, I mean, I, um, okay. uh, we, I work with market gardeners and I do this in my own garden. I run a complete and total mulch world because right. then I don't have to weed. Right. You know, and it uh, feeds the soil all the time. And the slugs, they have to eat something. They're decomposers. Mm -hmm. If you have a clean bed with no mulch, all they've got is your plants to eat. So they're, they're after like the dead decaying leaves, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, right. they're, they're down there. So the other strategy was to be very diligent when you're cleaning your plants and killing any, removing any dead leaves on, that are in contact with the ground. No, and then that, all they've got left is to eating your leaves. Then the they'll leaves? eat all okay. perfectly healthy leaf material goes down a slug, a treat. Okay. So if they're eating the decomposing material, I mean, what I used to do when I had a lot of um, brassica fall crops, Mm -hmm. And slugs are bad. This is before the slug baits came out. Because I had always had dogs, and I would yeah. never put the old metaldehyde baits anywhere. They were too poisonous. I would never use them. And I, I've got more things to do in my life than walk around <laughs> stamping on slugs, right? Yeah. So my slug strategy was to leave all of the, the succulent lower leaves that were kind of yucky. You know, on a Chinese cabbage, those first two or three leaves you pull off. I left it on the soil right around the plants. And it was what I call it my you can't beat them, join them strategy. Because that's what they're going to eat. They won't go up the plant and eat it if they've got something to eat. So my strategy is to leave them plenty to eat and mm. use baits on seed beds. When I have a bare soil like that. Yeah. Because the other thing that happens where you've got lots of mulches and chips is you have all those ground beetles. Mm -hmm. And you don't have ground beetles when you have bare soil. Right. When you've got nowhere for them to go. So rather than trying to keep an environment so clean you can't have slugs, because that's okay. impossible, I keep an environment that's so uh, decomposing that they've got other things to eat, and then I put bait out when I don't want them. And I, you know, between the bait and just kind of, you know, I, I, I don't have time to try and do anything else for slugs. It works actually quite well. So 
Thank you. Yeah, can't beat them, join them. Let's go to after just so you know. I got a, I got a head on it out of town. I just want you to know that some things that have always been taken as gospel, okay. don't believe it. Like if there's no pest on your tree, your fruit tree in the summer, for which oil, dormant oil works, you do not need a dormant oil spray because there are beneficial mites and insects that live in, that are overwintering in the bark of the tree. So you will kill them when you use the dormant spray. Mm -hmm. So if if uh, the, if you ha have oyster shell scale, works great. If you have aphids in the fall, which is very rare, works on the aphid eggs. Uh, dormant sprays do not work on tent caterpillar eggs. People apply it for that, but it doesn't work on it. Uh, so there are a few things. It does not work on aphids, winter moth, scale. Uh, I'm sorry, it does work on aphid eggs, winter moth, scale, and the chairs that soft fly that I said you could wash off with water. But if you don't have pests like this, then the dormant oils are probably no use at all. Hmm. And my pet peeve is those dormant oil kits that have the sulfur sprays with the oil, and you mix them together. The sulfur, the lime sulfur sprays work very well on a few common diseases, but mm. not with the timing in the middle of the winter. Mm. The best timing for, for the sulfur sprays to work on, on something like um, hair scab is um, as the leaves are falling off the trees, I think I've got it on the next slide, 90% of the leaves have dropped in the fall and then when the leaves are swelling in the spring. That's the best timing for a lot of lime sulfur sprays. But you can't put dormant oil on that or you would damage the tree. Right. So you can, <coughs> on those spray kits, you can take the oil and just use it separately. And you can take the lime sulfur and use it separately. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so don't spray any of this stuff if you don't already know that the problem is there for which that will work. So the tent caterpillar is better BT or use BT on it? After they've started eating, yeah. yes, or this pruning that I showed you, go out right there in April and get, cut the, it out, get yeah. the egg masses, right. um, or BT, um, you know, or let it rip. You know, if it's not very many of them, the trees leaf out again. Right. If it's apple trees and you're keeping a crop, you do need to control those tent caterpillars. You don't want to have the tree too stressed. Um, <laughs> Just because it's natural doesn't make it safe. You brought up that point. This is pyrethrum daisy. Yeah, right. This is a hover fly that could be a bee. It'll knock them right out of the sky. So yeah. just because organic growers can use it uh, doesn't mean it's um, going to be um, something you might want to use. And people try to, they think they're avoiding the damage that pesticides can do by making homemade sprays. Complete myth. And not only is that illegal, uh, but um, I mean, nobody's going to show up on your doorstep, probably, but and, and haul you in for doing it, but it is not legal. But a lot of the things that people make into these homemade sprays, they don't just kill insects, they all damage the plants, the leaf cuticles, oils, boy, I'm just, I'm just dealing with some. I do identifications um, of, from photographs for growers around the province on some projects, and they mail me photos, and I've just been sent a whack of, cucumber, of cucumbers, and I didn't read the email. I just looked at the pictures and went, oh my God, somebody sprayed something and burned these. And then I read it and it was like, we thought there might be some de so disease, so we made a baking soda spray <laughs> and put it on the cucumbers. It was like, awesome. my, awesome. I mean, nice. what you have here? And then she said, and then they looked really bad the next day. And I went, yeah. <laughs> yes. So you can do more harm to the plants than good, but remember, if it actually did kill pests, it's going to kill the beneficials that you're mm -hmm. working pretty hard to preserve. So don't panic. Just, you know, don't do anything about pests until you're positive you know what it is yeah. and you follow the problem, monitor it, yeah. so that you know whether it's getting worse or better or that there's anything you need to do, and then make a choice out of all of these possible tools, which ones are going to work. Yeah. But don't assume, because, you know, it's, it's, it's so variable. Like pulling all the leaves off, if you have powdery mildew, is harming the plant more than the powdery mildew. But pulling the leaves off, I mean, picking and clipping out 10 caterpillar egg masses is a really fast way to get rid of just totally that's over. So it's very effective. So different techniques work really well for different things.